And here Flash we off. go. This is Flash. And, and this is Grammy. In a perfect world, on Tuesday, the 14th of January, 2020. Say hi, Gramsy. Hi, Gramsy. <laughs> is that like George Burns saying, say goodnight, Gracie? Goodnight, hope, Gracie. I hope not. <laughs> Because, you know, half the people that uh, exist today wouldn't even know who George Burns was. Anyway, Grimner, you dirty old bastard. Hey, la did you catch his uh, Grim Leftovers last night or this, today? No, I didn't. I, I recommend, if you got time today after the show that we do, I suggest that you check out the Grimner Leftovers show. Very good. And and I will do so on BitChute.com. <laughs> well, he on was the RLM channel, the Real Liberty Media channel on BitChute.com. It's no. the alternative to YouTube. Yeah, and Grimner was doing his impression of a happy camper. It was a very unusual show. Anyway, you want to say hi to the bots and the bodies. Except Hank. Well, Hank, fuck Hank. But, Hank's, boy, that prick, he deserves to be banned from here. Away with you, Hank. Mm, okay. Well, whatever. In any case, over here in the <laughs> RLM chat, right up top, we got Barman, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world. Closely Barman. followed by Beetle. Beetle. Beetle's been giving us updates on earthquakes. Mother Nature, Mama Gaia, has got a whole lot of shape going on. Thank you, Beetle, for keeping us updated on that. We also got the Grimner is Grimner. here as well. Moose Quail. I Moose saw a Project Veritas thing earlier today before I had to run into town about some people that are Bernie Sanders nuts, which, you know, Bernie <laughs> Sanders is like supposed to be sharing the wealth kind of shit. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> and they were talking <laughs> about if Bernie Sanders doesn't get the nomination, Milwaukee's going to burn. And I'm thinking, Moosey, Moosey, did you know this? You got nut jobs in your neck of the woods? <laughs> <laughs> well, they're everywhere, but yeah. <laughs> well, that's we also do what? I said that's a surprise. Yeah, there's we also nut got lovely jobs in here. Wisco people, beware! Beware! Whether you be wearing fur or cotton, or by the way, cotton is is a GMO product. Um, <laughs> the lovely Miss Kate is here. It is Miss one of the top Kate. genetically modified crops out there. Just saying. But Miss Mary, um, are you are you genetically modified? I have been genetically modified against my will. They are crop Ooh, dusting as I speak. Wow. They are spraying the bugs, aka bipeds yeah. and yeah. quadrupeds out here. Oh, okay. Yeah, assholes. Um Anti is here. Hey Anti. Anti. Hey. That's all right. And the wonderful Asmodeus Asmo is here as well as Chalsa Denise. Chalsa. He got the O out of there, or yeah, she. Yeah, I know. Whatever the case may be. Yeah. I'm here, kind of, sort of. I also see a Java, 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 Java Doctor, too. Java who, uh, Denise. Yeah, he yeah. brought us some news that PB might be able to get back on. Oh. I've seen him a few times on um, Instagram, but I don't go on Instagram very often, so. Oh, okay. I don't know. I don't either. In any case, uh, uh, the, the, the Meister Brown. Woody! Woody! We also got some Poopster and Prince Oops, going on in the chat, as well as Rob Woik. Bubble Earth! Rob Woik has a CBD mm. link. Yeah. Where is that? And Java, yeah. Java had a good report about it from one night, using it one time. Like, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's... Um, C I L I B Y Design dot com. <laughs> well, so, Rob can repost it if you ask him nicely. I'll bet he'll put it back up in the main feed for your perusal. Hey, what Rob, do you that say, would be Rob? Works? Amazing if you did that. That way, if Grammy wrote it wrong or said it wrong, she she's not responsible. You'll get it's some. silly by design. C I L I <laughs> by See, design. That's silly. <laughs> What a name. I know. That's why I had to say C-I-L-I. -I. I know. Really, you make my head hurt when you do the smart things. I know. It's crazy. It's crazy. We also got some Rome. Rome. 
as well as Vanna White and her other half, Weather Dork, because Weather Dork is a dork and Vanna is a <laughs> Yeah, but and, they, they got rid of Hank, so that's good. Uh, well, I'm just happy. Vanna likes me today because I actually got a duck. Oh, um, you ducky. I know. Phantom is here, too. The, the Phantom. Phantom. The, oh, no, Phantom. the Phantom. We got a CC-66, too. C-C-66. As well as Oscura. Oscura. The lovely Cycles, I do believe, Hello, is in, but not the bad. Because she has yeah. to wake in the morning. She's got to go slave in Copenhagen tomorrow. Ah, uh, yippee skippy. Right. We also got a cyborgian noodle. May you be touched by that cyborgian noodle? Eh, I'm keep your noodle touched, off. So, you know, I've been touched for years. Just ask people that know me. By a noodle. We got the love. Do what? By a noodle. But let's not oh. get personal. Okay. No, let's not go there. Let's not go there. Donna Van Meter. I know that damn Van Meter is in the Van chat Peter again. Meter. That yes. damn Van Meter. Duh. I love you, guys, lady. I also see duh, duh, duh. E-Man and m Flash somebody. Me. Da-da-da-da. Da-da-da-da. <laughs> we also got a frumpy here as well as a grommet. And hey, I am Lone Frog. Lone Frog. Just in. He just hopped in. Oh, Hippity hoppy. We got another Java Doctor, too, with a double Java underscore. Java Doctor 2. Two well, no, this is also. Maybe also, Java Doctor also. That's what also. two means, also. Yeah. You it's with grammar two Nazi. I know. You grammar Nazi me. Grammar not a Nazi. Oh. <laughs> We got wow. a JJ's nine no, nine no, no, JJ's no. as well, and I hope the wind ain't blowing as bad in your neck of the woods as it is mine, then, because it would be going right up the kilt, right up the butthole. Oh. Wee! I also see kisses in the chat <laughs> as well as Mr. Snick. Does Mr. Snick go patty whack? No, <laughs> Mr. Snick slaps people around with big words. Oh, yeah. Okay, I see a pop a pop a pawn sauce Ooh, too, sauce. as well as. Pop it. Sound like city mines. It's sock. Flim, slim, flim. Yeah. Smart ass. The holiest the holy fucking is. Roger in Z-Picks. Ami, 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 ami. That's the holiest Roger. In that song. And z Yeah. Do you want to know what the title of tonight's episode of In a Perfect World is? What is the title of tonight's I episode? I have called tonight's so, fire the police and bring back dueling. And the reason I called it that and such is somebody posted the coolest damn link on, uh, I think it was RLM today. I reposted it. And this is why I'm so excited and gave the show such a great title. And boink, there you go. For your you reading go. enjoyment, ladies and gentlemen, for the first time ever on RLM main feed. Well, since Rob Works linked it an hour and 26 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> First time since then. <laughs> anyway. Man requests twa- trial by yeah. combat in oh. divorce. Do you, you know, that yeah. would be so much more fun if they were doing it with Nerf bats. But let's read. <laughs> yeah, but let's read this before you do your. Because you wanted to come here tonight to do a special report on your thing. But yeah. before you get involved in it, this is a kind of short, and it's sick, but amusing at the same time. Well, then you just go right ahead and read it there, mister. Oh. <laughs> I will repeat Miss Mary Man requests trial by combat in divorce. Wants to forge his own swords. Posted on July, January 14th, 2020 by Galen. Okay, whatever that is. The Mine Unleashed by John Vibes. In a bizarre filing, a Kansas man has asked an Iowa court to honor his request for trial by combat in a custody hearing with his ex-wife. The 40-year-old man, David Ostrom, wants to meet his ex-wife and her attorney on the field of battle where I will rend their souls from their corporal bodies. David Armstrong claims that his ex-wife 
Bridget Ostrom has destroyed him legally. David has asked the court to give him 12 weeks to prepare his weapon for the battle. <laughs> he says that he plans to forge his own katana and waki sashi swords. Whoa, that kind of... Hmm. Anyway, David claimed in the court filing that it is not technically illegal to request a trial by combat. And that it... Wait, that it was... Legally evoked as recently as 1818 in British court. <laughs> to this day, trial by combat has never been explicitly banned or restricted as a right in these United States. The court filing reads, according to the Des Moines Register, it appears that true, <laughs> the true target of David's frustrations is actually his ex-wife's attorney, Matthew Hudson of Harlan. I think I've met Mr. Hudson's absurdity with my own absurdity, David explained. David also suggested that his ex-wife can choose her attorney as a champion, which means that he would stand and fight for her. Hudson has responded to the trial by combat request by filing a motion to suspend David's visitation rights to his children, and ordered him to undergo a court-mandated psychological evaluation. Hudson also argued that a duel resulting in death would be disproportional response to matters of custody and tax burdens. Now, I say it would solve both of those two things in one spell. Anyway. In his reply, Hudson said, Although Ostrom and potential combatants do have souls to be rendered, they respectfully request that the court not order this done. It should be noted that just because the U.S. and Iowa constitutions do not specifically prohibit battling another person with a deadly katana sword, it does not prohibit a court sitting in equal in inequity from ordering same pussies. However, David says that the duel does not necessarily need to end in death, as it is possible for one of the contestants to cry craven or give up the battle. Respondent and counsel have proven themselves to be cravens by refusing to answer the call to battle. <laughs> Thus, they should lose this motion by default, David wrote. <laughs> David does not expect the judge to grant his request, but he did say that if Mr. Hudson is willing to do it, I will meet him. I don't think he has the guts to do it. <laughs> I, I still think what? Nerf back, you know, <laughs> Nerf bats at 20 well, paces. Yeah, but that's and then a, just whop the, because you know yeah. those things can sting. Yeah, but that kind of anger... Uh, you'd have too much fun. I mean, can you imagine if you're really mad at someone they hit you with a Nerf bat? You'd end up laughing about it. You can't hold that kind of anger and laugh at the same time. Pick one road. Can't, can't do them both. Well, you could laugh maniacally. <laughs> I often do. <laughs> I do For too. no fucking reason. I just laugh. <laughs> well, the side of my head that other people don't know is going on. But that's another story. So, well... You know, Saturday, and that's usually a good thing when you have thoughts in your head and you're laughing maniacally. It's usually best that other people don't know what you're laughing maniacally about. Well, sometimes if it involves Crisco and a live chicken, I would keep it to myself. That's for sure. But you know, Saturday I was listening to you, and you know what I noticed? What's that? You had something on your mind. Yes, I did. I believe they were it, written pages of text that you wanted to uh, inform us of on the show tonight. But yes. what I don't know what to do about is uh, putting some kind of thing on there to represent the notes. So this is just you reading. They either hear yeah. it or they don't. It's on them. So uh, what do it's, I call well, this? Hmm? It's it's a story that Anastasia is telling to Vladimir in uh, the Ringing Cedars book okay. number 8.1, which is Whoa, the new Whoa, slow down there, speed reading girl. I, know. I hope I spell cedars right. 
All right, the ringing cedars. D-A-R-S. Ringing cedars. D-A, D-A oh, okay. 8.1. Oh, yeah, but oh, yeah, cedars. Oh, okay. 8, 8.1. I know how to do that. 8.1. Okay, I got to 8.1. Yeah, now what? and the, the book is called The New Civilization. Oh, okay. The So reading from... The news. I am reading from that. Right. I'm reading chapter right. six. But that's what I'm going to write. Reading from. All right. And then I'll okay. shut up. Reading from the. Whoops. Yeah. The new civilization. Yeah. Is there a, a anybody that's going to take credit for writing it, or did we already cover that? Uh, no. Vladimir Vladimir Migre. Okay. Bye, Vlad. I don't know how to spell that, but. V L A D I M I R. I M I R. Okay. Uh huh. Vladimir. Okay. Migre is M E G R E. Okay. With a little thing on it that I probably have some here. Yeah. I don't know how to use it. Oh, well. Yeah. Cirque would know, but oh, well. it's a Danish keyboard. I ain't, I, I ain't fucking with it anymore, but now for your listening pleasure, Graham Z. Now, this is the story of Demon Cratius. So, <clears throat> the slaves walked slowly in single file, every one of them carrying a polished stone. Four lines of them, each line stretching a kilometer and a half long, from the stone quarries to the site where the construction of the walled city had begun, under the watchful eyes of armed guards and one military guard for every ten slaves. Now, off to the side, on the pinnacle of the 13-meter-high mountain, crafted out of polished stones, sat Cratius, one of the high priests. For the past four months, he had been silently observing the construction activity. Nobody distracted him. Not a single person dared interrupt his contemplation, even with a sideways glance. Now, both slaves and guards accepted this artificial mountain with its throne on top as a fixed feature of the landscape, and nobody paid attention to the figure either sitting motionless on the throne or walking to and fro around the lookout platform atop the mountain. Cratius had set himself the task of restructuring the state, consolidating the power of the priests for the millennium, subjugating to them all the people of the earth, turning all without exception, including national rulers, into slaves of the priests. Now, one day, Cratius came down from his throne, leaving a double in his place. The priest changed his clothes and took off his wig. He gave orders to the captain of the guard to have him bound in chains like a simple slave and placed him in line behind a a strong young slave named Nard. Looking into the faces of the various slaves, Cratius had noticed that this young man in particular had a penetrating and purposeful look, not a wandering or detached gaze as did many of the others. Nard's countenance alternated between excitement and intense contemplation. That means he's hatching some kind of plan, the priest realized, but he wanted confirmation of the accuracy of this observation. So for two days running, Cratius followed Nard's every move, silently hauling the stones, sitting beside him at mealtimes and sleeping next to him in the barracks. On the third night, Directly, or directly, the sleep command had been given, and Cratius turned to the young slave in a tone of bitterness and despair, whispered to no one in particular, Will this situation keep up for the rest of our lives? The priest watched as the young slave gave a shudder and suddenly turned to face him. His eyes were sparkling which was noticeable even in the dim torchlight of the cavernous barracks. It won't last much longer, the young slave whispered back. I've been working out a plan, and you, old fellow, can be part of it. Well, what sort of plan, the priest asked with a sigh of indifference, and Nard began to explain with an air of confidence and enthusiasm. You see, old man, soon you and I... And all of us, 
We'll be free men instead of slaves. Figure it out for yourself. There's just one guard for every ten of us. And one guard, too, for every fifteen women slaves who do the cooking and sewing. Now, when the time comes, if we all fall upon the guards at once, we can overpower them. Makes no difference that the guards are armed and wearing chains. We outnumber them ten to one, and our chains can also be used as weapons to shield us from the blows of their sword. We'll disarm the guards, tie them up, and seize their weapons. Well, hold on there, young man, Cratius sighed again and added with a feign of indifference. Your plan isn't completely thought through. Sure, you can disarm the guards watching over us, but it won't be long before the ruler sends in replacements. A whole army, maybe. And he'll have the insurgents killed. Now, I've thought of that too, old man. We'll have to choose the time when the army's not around, and that time is coming. We've all noticed how the army's preparing for a campaign. They're getting provisions ready for a three-month track, and that means that in three months the army will arrive at its destination and engage the enemy in combat. It will be weakened in battle, but it will be victorious and bring back many new slaves. They're already building new barracks to house them. We just have to start disarming the guards as soon as our ruler's army gets into battle. The couriers will need at least a month to go call it home, and it will take at least three months after that for the weakened army to return. By then, the four months will be up, and we'll be ready to meet them. We'll have at least as many fighters as there are in the army, and the slaves they seize will want to join us when they see what's happening. I've thought it all out in advance, old man. I see, young man, with your plan you can disarm the guards and overpower the army. Already sounding more cheerful. But what will become of the slaves after that? What will happen with the rulers, the guards, and the soldiers? Well, I haven't given too much thought to that. Only one thing comes to mind, though. Whoever was a slave in the past will become a free man, and whoever's not a slave today will be a slave tomorrow. That's according to Nard. But what about the priests? Tell me, young man, after your victory, will they be slaves too? The priests? Well, I haven't thought about that either, but now that I'm thinking, the priests can stay where they are. The slaves and rulers listen to them. Sometimes... They're hard to understand, but I get the feeling that they're harmless. Let them keep on telling their stories about the gods, but we know best how to live our lives and have a good time. Hmm, have a good time. That's great, said the priest. But there was no sleep for Cratius that night. Only contemplation. Sure, he thought. The simplest course of action would be to report this to the ruler and have them seize this young slave. He's clearly the chief instigator. But that won't solve the problem. The slaves will always have the desire to be freed from bondage. New leaders will emerge, new plans will be hatched, and as long as that goes on, the main threat to the state will always be from within. Cratius was faced with the challenge of working out a plan to enslave the whole world. And he realized there was no way he could attain his goal through physical compulsion alone. What he needed to do was exert a psychological influence on every single individual, on whole nations of people. He had to bring about the thought of every single human being to the notion that slavery is the highest bliss. He had to launch a self-developing program to disorient whole nations in space, time, and ideas, especially in their literal perception of reality. Cratius' thought was working faster and faster, and he was no longer conscious of his body or the heavy chains on his arms and legs. And all of a sudden, like a lightning bolt, a program 
came to his thought. Even though all the details were still to be worked out, he could not explain it to anyone else. He could already feel it within, exploding off the scale. Cratius was now feeling himself to be the omnipotent ruler of the world. Lying on his bunk in chains, he was full of self-exultation. Tomorrow morning, when they're escorting us all to work, I'll give the secret signal and have the guard's captain take me out of the line and remove the chains. I'll finalize my program, say a few words, and the world will start to change. Incredible. Just a few words, and the whole world will be subject to me, to my thoughts. God really has given to man the power unequaled in the universe, the power of human thought to bring forth words which can change the course of history. The situations turned out very well indeed. The slaves have prepared their plan of insurrection. It's logical, this plan, and is clearly capable of leading to an interim result very favorable to them. But with just a few words, I shall ensure that not only they, but their further descendants, and the rulers of the earth, too, will be slaves for millennia to come. <clears throat> In the morning, on Cratius' signal, the captain of the guard freed him from his chains, and the very next day, the five other priests, along with the pharaoh, were invited to his observation platform. Cratius began his speech before the gathering of others. What you're about to hear must not be noted down or passed along by any of you. There are no walls around us, and my words will be heard by no one but you. I have thought up a way of turning all people living on the earth into slaves of our Pharaoh. Wink, wink. Mm -hmm. This is not something one can do even with the aid of vast numbers of troops and exhausting wars. But I shall accomplish it with a few simple sentences. All I need do is utter them, and just two days later... You will see how the world has begun to change. Now take a look down there and see long lines of slaves in chains, each slave carrying a stone. They're guarded by a host of soldiers. The more slaves there are, the better the state, or so we always thought. But the more slaves there are, the more we have to be afraid of their rebelling so we increase the size of our guard. We're obliged to feed our slaves well, otherwise they will not be able to perform their heavy menial labor. But still, they are lazy and inclined to rebellion. See how slowly they move, and the guards have become lazy and do not bother using their whips to beat even the strongest and healthiest slaves. But they will soon be moving much more quickly. They won't need any guards. The guards themselves will be turned into slaves. This can be affected in the following ways. Before sunset today, heralds will be sent out everywhere to proclaim the Pharaoh's decree. With the dawn of the new day, all slaves will be granted complete freedom. For each stone brought to the city, the free man will receive one coin. The coins may be exchanged for food, clothing, housing, a place or a palace in town, or even a whole town. From here on in, you are all free people. After the priests had let Cratius' words sink in, one of them, the eldest, said, You are a demon, Cratius. The demonry resulting from your plan will cover most of the nations of the world. So I may indeed be a demon. And what I have thought up, well, people in the future may call democracy. So when you stop and you think about all of that, and the results of that little edict that Demon Cratius just put out there, soon all the quote-unquote free men who were once slaves 
were now quickly carrying stones to receive a coin. Not only were they doing so, but so were the guards. And so were some of the other higher ups. So yes, it truly did work. And it turned all of mankind into slaves of the coin and the priests. So that's pretty much that little ditty. Well, that kind of just defined what we're doing. Society, you know, the truth of what society really is, not the crap they tell us it is. Oh, yeah. I just, I read that and I thought, oh, my Lord, that is so, so pertinent to what the hell's going on. Well, if you couldn't, if you couldn't get us to comply, what would you have? Chaos. Yeah. They, they think, they get told they have chaos, but they don't. It's that total order with a few shootings here and there, maybe a little stealing, but for the most part, it's very orderly. Well, and all of those shootings and stealings Mm -hmm. are all part of keeping the system. You know, it's a job security thing. You betcha, baby. One hand washes the other. It's not a Jew thing. (sighs) No, it's not. No, we didn't invent that. No, we may have perfected it, you know, but mm, that's negotiable. There's lots of people that are just full of shit and willing to do anything to get what they want. True. But they don't tell you that. They tell you they're they're here to help. That's how they get their foot in the door. Well, I'm going to help you. You are? Well, no, yeah. but sounds better than bend over and take it I mean, when you think about it. Well... <laughs> But, yeah. Well, honey, please doesn't always get you what you want. So, you know, man has learned to uh, uh, evaluate a situation and do what's necessary in it to do what they want to gain what they need. And they call it shit like politics and religion, but it's just ankle grabbing and slave holding. Those are and what you were reading about. It's what we are. We're slaves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Some of us in more traditional fashion, but they own the paperwork that we were born into. So no matter what I do as a physical act through my life, they still got the last laugh when they own the document. (laughs) In my my way. Yeah. And yet does that document really, does it really matter? I think the only reason that they're saying that they own that document it has any kind of credence, any kind of is because we believe it. Well, sure, you can't do anything without them. Well, now you can. I guess if you're black skinned, you could cross a border as a refugee, and nobody would really, except the other refugees, wouldn't know. You know? <laughs> but yeah. I, I would get caught because I'm like white. They would say, hey, whitey boy, you're not one of us. There you go. I don't belong. <sighs> what am I going to do? I don't know. I well, don't know. I, I, I just keep thinking, you know, all of this stuff is there for a reason, and we're supposed mm-hmm. to be seeing this stuff. Hmm. And and so many people see things from the perspective that we have been given in order to interpret things. You know, like, mm-hmm. oh, that mm-hmm. rainbow over there, that mm-hmm. is that is such and such and such and such. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Or that person over there, well, because they are dressed in somewhat tatty clothes, they must be a slacker or they must be a this or a that or whatever. And people accept the explanations that we've been given without digging any further, you know, without doing any kind of going up and talking to said person and finding out that, hey, they really are. A very intelligent person. They, you know, have well, wealth beyond measure because they don't need money. But Mary, 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 Mary. Remember what? in our day when the telephone was connected to a fucking wall? Mm-hmm. And you could actually talk to the next person next to you and they wouldn't freak out and think you were going to hurt them? 
Times have changed a little bit in the last few years. Yes, they have. Okay. So this electronic world that we're trying to make the best of has really fucked us up socially in ways that people don't, they don't really see it or they don't think they see it. So it's not true when it is. But you can't get anybody's attention anymore unless you set yourself on fire and run around in circles. Then you might, somebody might notice you, but. Nah, I know people are always expecting the flashbang. I'm telling you, I saw a kid walking towards me today here in Freddy Town when I was coming from the grocery store getting my necessary provisions. And this kid was so enthralled with that freaking phone, didn't really notice that I was walking right into her. You know, it was like most people would realize I was there long before that and had either moved or made some kind of eye, but never moved off that fucking phone. It was weird. Have I've, you not you know, seen videos of people standing, you know, videoing someone else that's just walking along and walks? right into a water fountain or walks right into a door because they're so busy staring at their phones. Yeah, <laughs> videos. But today I saw it in person. I've been on islands and small community for eight years. I don't get out and see the big city anymore. So, And it wasn't really this bad. When I was in Copenhagen, that was, what, six years ago now? Five years ago, something like that. And when I was in Copenhagen, it was still... A lot of people did not rely on the phone the way they do today. The way I see it, it's just, wow. Well, it's that's because it's it's compounded. You can't you know, function not- in Danish society without a freaking cell phone unless you're not in it. I'm telling you, from living here. So they know, besides the not speaking the Danish, they know I'm not part of their thing because I'm not plugged in. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's and a yet, common... And is that necessarily a bad thing? Sure. Oh, yeah. That sets you worlds apart with uh, intellectual people that know shit. See, just like the old days, people assume by the way you look and what you got, what you show them you have, everything about you. They judge the book by the cover. It's so fucking predictable. I've been doing it for, I don't know, the better part of 40, 45 years. Just... People tell you what you are. It's just just the way it is. Yeah. I don't have to declare I am anything. I'll always have somebody yelling, Hey, American! What? You know, that's their decision. And then it's me, because I know the truth about the whole thing. Who owns the paperwork? That's all this comes down to. It's a tax fucking thing. This passport crap, right? It's a tax document. So that if I decide to do any financial transacting that the governments get the fair share of my booty and turn the tables on them, basically. So I'm not chasing no freaking booty in the first place. So there's nothing to fuck with me about. You got well, you to understand that the last thing the government gives a shit about is a poor man. No, no, no. They want somebody with means to rob them of their wealth. Otherwise, what would they gain out of it? Yeah, well, yeah, and see, isn't that just a little bit on the bass awkward side? You know, people want to have more stuff, so then, you know, then they have to start worrying about someone who's going to take some of their stuff, so then they have to start implementing security measures because mm-hmm. someone might want some of their stuff. Okay, but Mary, look at how... It's, look at how it's the, a crazy circular oh, world. Well, you're going all bloppy on the radio. Back to start, here we go. Okay, you may need to uh, number it one so it doesn't record over the other one. I don't or know. Not. Grim Grim will be able to do whatever Grim does. I okay. don't. I don't never tell Grim how to do his stuff, but if he needs anything, he'll ask. Me. So, okay. Yeah, we we have a great working relationship with this. Uh, my lack of ability with this computer stuff, you know, because I didn't follow directions to a degree. And then when I get in over my head, he's he's all right, always available to help me get through it. But this, I think what this was is uh, I have 
uh, too many games on this computer I play with, and they conflict with the uh, audio settings and whatnot. And they, when they do that, something wonky happens to the the speakers or whatever, and I lost the speakers, and killed the radio show live while we're doing it. Like some kind of dumbass. <laughs> yeah, I kind of noticed that. It was like, holy crap, where'd it go? Well, Grim, I, I hope Grim can patch this together. If not, he'll say something. And what should we do? Either do the whole show over again or what? Nah, take two? Yeah. That was a good story, though, because it did define our living situation, you know? It was like I was telling you about that strike. They had a, a freak, not a strike, but a. Some builder decided in Copenhagen to, to hire Polish illegals to work for less money, and the union went down there and busted it up in two hours. They had a signed contract in two hours from the time it started. And they were violent, too. They were throwing rocks, and they pulled the scaffolding down. And said, no, 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 we're not having any of this shit. And that's what I, what I say about the Danish people as far as um, the people being together. Who, when push comes to shove, they stick with their own. You know, they're solid and they're they're unified, and they they come together and back each other up. So, nothing's going to happen to Denmark. And that's that side of all this crap that we're dealing with. See, and part of me says "boo ya, way to go," and then another part of me is thinking, that's how the unions got started here in the United States. You know, they didn't want the Chinamen taking jobs away from these guys because the Chinamen was a working fool. For less money, and right. And it made, for less money. Right. And so they decided that they would start a union, and the unions were not necessarily nice people. They were violent individuals, and they pretty much extorted those that would hire into – using them as opposed to the cheaper labor because it costs them two to three times more, if not, you know, bodily damage as well, mm -hmm. to hire someone that would do a better job for less money. Yeah, but you know, the age group that we're speaking about, I would say is probably the median would be about 40. I don't think the 20-year-old has that uh, backbone here in this time in life. From what I've seen of the, the kids, the young children, you know, the children and the teenagers that I've encountered, they, they're not as tough as their elders, is all I'm saying. Softer well, life, you know, we got this electronic yeah. freaking world, man. And I'm telling you, uh, because of it, I think children in the last, what, 30, 40 years have been less physically active outside. Because well, that's how I grew up. Eh, go find something to fucking do. You know, don't sit around well, in the I, house if you, you know, blah, blah, blah. There's a part of me that, that wonders if it's messing with their uh, skills at imagining things, you know, and, con and coming up with concepts other than what they have been given as well. Because, you know, you've got all of these distractions, all of these electronic distractions. And I know when we were kids, I mean, you give us a couple of boxes that dryers came in or a refrigerator <laughs> boxes know. and something like that. Make a fort, Man. have a battle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, the imagination was sure. insane. Yeah. You know, or yeah. like with real little rascals, you know, you take a couple of wagons and you hook them together. Yeah. And next thing you know, you got a train going on and you're... You know those those red rider ragon, wagons, red, red, red rider wagons. Yeah. yeah, say that three times fast. Well, that, that, will that. will you stay a little after the show with me and help me patch up the notes? Because I had been keeping them as I went, but I didn't save the one my computer crashed. I should have sent it to Grim as it was and added to it, but I didn't think. So I need yeah. to do it all over again, and I forgot everything I, I wrote. <laughs> Absolutely. That's why I keep notes, because my memory is shot out. I'm an old man. Did you know that? You're not an old man, because oh, I'm older shit. than you, well, and I'm not an old man. Well, <laughs> yeah, isn't it something how it's all relative to uh, 
I think the, your freedom of motion dictates your mental age. Yeah, because we can look all worn out and all haggard and all that shit, but I can still you know, physically, I don't look that way. But mental, you know, old guy wise, I guess I do, I'm gray haired and whatnot. But physically, I can still walk around like anybody else. Not as a, you know, like, oh, that poor old guy over there. One of those guys. I'm not there yet. But I should have been. Yeah. I, the way I live my fucking life, I'm amazed. Like, I was reading a um, Java doctor, got Rob Wirtz, got Java doctor with stuff that he's... Blah, blah, sure. blah. Yeah, but I'm just amazing. And then the very first night, he goes, wow, I slept all night. Wow. That was the goal because he had knee surgery. It, I thought it was handled badly somehow, just out of my, my feelings about medical. And here he is mm-hmm. all this time later still suffering from the original, you know, the surgery of doing this knee. And then he takes a mm-hmm. takes a little CBD oil and gets a night's rest, so. There, see, how do you convince people they got to be desperate enough to listen to the problem, you know, to the answer to their problem before they'll do anything about it? That's how we are, I think. I mean, I, I'm assuming that. Hmm? Well, yeah. I mean, you know, because we're not a bunch of negative Nelly worry warts. We wait until shit happens. And then sometimes, you know, if you're not preventative about certain things at our age... Well, then you're fucked. You should have paid attention to what people were telling you. Just chosen the areas that you apply it in a little bit more closely. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people wait until they start feeling pain before they start tending to whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And I've I know enough people out here that have had knee replacement surgery. Yeah. You Does know, it ever go I'm, well, Mary? No. Actually, my former boss. Yeah. She it did she did amazing with her knee surgery and she had actually when she was uh, scheduled to have her first knee replacement done was the same weekend that her husband started chemotherapy yeah. and so she needed to be up and tootling to take care of him and you know within three weeks she was up walking just fine. Um, then she, a year later, she went in and had the other knee replaced. And no, actually, it was two years later because her husband died a year later. <laughs> this chemotherapy kills you. And um, but in any case, when she got the second one replaced, within two weeks' time, she was walking faster than the people at physical therapy that were telling her, "Now you need to slow down. You need to take your time." Well, she's like the bionic woman. I mean, cry many Christmas. She got two new knees and was going like crazy. Mm. But she's the only one yeah. that I know yeah. that it worked out that well. Weird, huh? Cause yeah. I, I'm Everyone you. else has, you know, and wow. some of them, hell, one of them, yeah. um, he had just one knee replaced. And then one thing led to another, which led to another, which led to another. And then next thing you know, it was just. Uh, last November, he passed away, and it was only like within a year of him getting his knee replaced, yeah. but he had either an infection, or he got this, or he got that, or, and yeah, it's like, once he got that of... knee replaced, he yeah. just went to shit, and then was oh, dead within a year. Oh, oh, oh. Well, still, though, hmm. see, it's my experience, and my belief now, because I've done it, that if you, uh, do a little reading and check into what what the remedies are, what the old days did. What did they do way back when before pharma? Mm-hmm. And there's ways to find out, and they're true. So I've oh yeah yeah, and uh, yeah. what I've learned in my lifetime is all these new improved companies that come along, you know, since I was a child, improved this and improved that, all turned out to be nothing but garbage. So the things that they were improving and replacing, those things worked, but they were more expensive and yielded a smaller profit margin. And the world is, that's what these fuckers are all about. They're not about a good product or anything more than profit in their pocket. That's the motivator, right? How do you Mm -hmm. make money off of money? And as a collective, we don't 
We don't put a stop to this shit. So, hmm. they don't play in it either. I'm not at our level. Come on. I mean, these some of these fuckers are eating off the gold plates. Look at that prick in the White House. Donald I, I have fucking no idea. stomp. Why would you, know? you want to live off of, or eat off of a gold plate? I don't know, but I mean, they flaunt all these things. I don't know if they're true or not. I don't really even care. I mean, it the, I I don't complain so much about the quality of uh, physical life that I got. I complain about the quality of the resources that we are sold with our own consent, and it's all bad for us. But we don't all know that. We, a lot of us know it. Some of us know it. Some people don't even give a flying fuck if it's good for you. Or not. They don't even know what that means. That's how dumbed down humanity has gotten. Not just society, you, by the way, folks. You know how dumbed down humanity has gotten? Yeah. Or at least some members of humanity, society, whatever. Yeah. They are willing to bring physical violence against you because you challenge their paradigm. You challenge their be life system. Oh, huge. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's it's crazy. I mean, no, I it's not. Niece. No, it's not. Crazy. I have a niece that went all batshit nuts on me because mm-hmm. I was trying to tell her, "Okay, have you checked into this? Have you checked into that?" because her son at 18 months was verbal. He was he was a normal 18-month-old kid. Inoculated, huh? And then he got his MMR. Mm. And then he started yeah. going downhill. Oh, yeah. And he is five years old now, yeah. and he is nonverbal. Great. And so I was trying to, you know, send her links to help her investigate mm-hmm. and find out, you know, what she might be able to do, what options she may have for clearing out oh. some of the neurotoxins that are obviously in his system. Yeah. Because you don't go from perfectly healthy at 18 months to nonverbal a couple years later without having some kind of foreign intervention. You know, you just that just doesn't happen. There there is no genetic code that says that you're going to go you're gonna regress like that. <laughs> no, and, no. That but so, you could sell that idea she, though. Yeah, but she jumped all yeah. over my shit. Yeah. And said, and basically, and the way I took it, the way it, it came across to me was, how dare you point out that I may be the cause of what's going on with my son because I took him to the doctor and I allowed them to inoculate him. And I get that. I, I get that whole, but biting me because I'm the messenger and trying to help her find a solution for her little one. That does not cure the problem. That does not address the initial problem. And she still takes him for his inoculations. And it's like, sweetheart, you are an intelligent child. You are a very intelligent child. Why do you keep repeating what I have sent you evidence from the quote-unquote medical system that they don't want you to know about? I've sent you this evidence. Hmm. Why do you continue to jump down my throat, right. and why do you continue to add more toxins into your child? It just it makes no sense to me. Oh, so her answer to his illness is to get more shots? Yeah, she keeps up his shots so that he wow. can go to public school. Yeah. Boy. And, doesn't and right now the... she's she's battling with the state trying to get... Um, assistance for, you know, some kind of physical therapy or or whatever to help him since he's nonverbal. Wow. And it's like, sweetheart, sweetheart. And I'm, I'm really, really, I'm not, I'm not yelling at her or no, anything. No, I, I just keep sending her links and saying, yeah. I hear where you're coming from, honey, but just try and read some of this stuff. Check this link out. Check this out. Hmm. Look into this. Maybe, just maybe, the path that you're going down 
isn't the most appropriate. And all I get back is you just don't understand. Okay, you're right. I don't. Well, I don't understand how you can keep taking your kid back yeah, for more ever, shots. Does she ever say what specifically it is you don't understand? Because apparently, Listen, I don't. It's, I don't understand what it's like to be a parent, a working mom with a child that, oh, uh, that. that's autistic no, 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 and right. nonverbal. That's well, what yeah, she has but, told me. But you know how the child got to be autistic and nonverbal. She's the one that will not accept the reality of it, not you. But why are you? Well, because I'm throwing all of this junk science at her. Even John, though it's science. coming, oh. you know, even though it's coming from yeah. government links, yeah. well, you know, yeah. information that the CDC has, that the FDA CDC. has, that that all of these other places, mm. all this information that they have, yeah, this is... but they don't want you to know. So you have to actually know what you're looking for in order to find it. But if someone sends you the link, yeah. Still, this, like, oh. this is the source of my aggravation towards the system that I participate in. Because the folks that need the knowledge that we do have, collective knowledge, right? <clears throat> the Rob Works and the, the Grimners and the Marys and the Moose Girls, you know, the group has this mm -hmm. collective. One person's a little stronger in one area than another, pays more attention to certain things. But uh, the people that need to know this stuff the most aren't aware that there's a problem to be solved. They think the problem to be solved is solved by bombing some prick 10,000 miles away with a big bomb. That's how their mind works to solve. You know, That's a problem solver is to murder someone. And there's people that really, they believe this crap. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know. <laughs> You know, I know. where what uh, what do they think that if the guy in charge drops dead, that there ain't somebody else waiting for him to drop dead so they can tell everybody else what the fuck to do? It's an old game. It's been going on since ever I can remember, and you know, and it's treated like it's something surprising every time. Every four years, something new happens, and I don't see it. You know what I see? What do you see? Reruns. Well, yeah, there is nothing new under the sun. Yeah, and that's sad. Well, so you know what I learned to do is become comfortable and complacent with my particular surroundings that I'm familiar with. And I think it brought me a peace kind of a thing because I come from combat, you know, America, fight for everything. You know, mm -hmm. you, yeah, because if you don't if you think about it in the right frame of mind, Everything you're encouraged to succeed at takes fat. You got 50 competitors. Da, 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 da. Well, I found an easier way to do it than that. So I didn't ever have to. After a certain age, I was, I, I did that scrap and shit when I was young. But when I got past, I would say 28 was probably the last time I was competitive to, you know, get somewhere and make money. And then I, I don't know. It just snapped. Said fuck all that shit. I decided to be whatever the hell I turned out to be. And mm -hmm. there was yeah, well, a very unpopular freaking decision to make. I'm telling you, boy, it's cost me um, a lot in terms of loss, you know, relationships and friendships. Yeah. Because uh, I wouldn't do what I was expected to do. With. Time it was time to go somewhere else. You know, I gotta, I gotta do this. You know? And I could never. But has it really that. cost you? Oh fuck yeah! Sure, 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 sure. But okay, so if it costs you, then you should be worse off than. Well, that doesn't necessarily. Gasoline cost me to drive cars. You know, things have a price to pay. This is the reality of life. If you want to gain something. By moving forward physically in, in the world, then you got to give up where you're at to go to the next thing. So, of course, you lose something. Either you lose something or you didn't give a shit about these fuckers you were hanging with in the first place. And I'm not really like that. I, I care about who I'm around when I'm around them. But out of sight, out of mind. 
You know, it's well, like the holding allegiance to the to the flag and all that horse shit kind of stuff. No, but I'm loyal to the people that I consider uh, to be close to in whatever way I see that. See, and I'm kind of sort of, I guess I have joined the school of thought of did I lose something or did I let it go? No, it doesn't matter how you explain it. That's an emotional wreckage thing. Uh, what I mean is just the but overall. It, well, I mean, Sir, we were talking about this the other day. I might not be getting her point across the way she does because I talk to her. But uh, I'm a lot older than Cirque in certain circles of life. Okay? Uh huh. And that concept when we're together isn't really a strong, apparent thing. We're very equal. But mm -hmm. when we talk about certain events, then it makes the age thing uh, an awareness about it. Because I've done a lot of things people 40 years old haven't done yet. Yeah. Well, there you go. Well. Because of my age and experience, not because of anything else, not my country I'm from, just because of who I am. And uh, that's what partnerships are made of, I think, is when the other guy, like the farmer, sees you for who you are, you know, yeah. and that doesn't terrify them. And usually the, the male mind today is trained and, and modified into females are the enemy. And if I, yeah. if I took a, a, an objective look at my history with women, I could back that up too, but I don't like to blame everybody else. You know, shit didn't work out. Okay. What happened? Really, is that going to fucking change? No. Because everybody's got a different explanation about the same thing they saw. So, I didn't never like to get into shit that turned into all that. It's like politics or religion, school. Yeah. Well... well. Those are those are the things that you really you don't speak about those things in polite company because the company is no longer polite when you bring up those topics. <laughs> I never I've never been accused of keeping polite company. But you know, oddly enough though I have. I've had a lot of uh I don't what would you say, mentors in my childhood that were very straight laced people, didn't smoke, didn't drink, uh no perversions uh, on on the level of social. You know, looking at at them, they seem like just a a one people. You know, but yeah, today they would be like like oh look at these old weirdos from the sixties and the fifties, and but they they're the ones that gave me the foundation that I stand on now, that works so well for me today. Yeah. This isn't legal and schmeagle. This is a society allowing me to stay in it because I'm not pissing anybody off. Well, that's because we're all co-creators, whether we want to admit it or not. We're all acting and reacting amongst ourselves. Right. And as long as in a society situation, you don't go around being the fool and acting insane, then you're good. And all that color and you know where you're from shit doesn't really matter. Times it matters is when you're misbehaving in the society that you're in. In the society I came from, I don't know what you would have to do to be called misbehaving now. You know, they've got parades with grown men running down the street wearing you know shoelaces around their nuts. So, you know, and that's like promoted by the state. These people think that it's a good thing. And in the day I came from, if you did that, whew, you're going to piss a few guys off. Let's just say that. Well, that's because the state has decided that instead of actually being for the individual, it's going to promote the special kind of special hmm. in order to keep the friction going. Hmm. Because that's the ulterior motive. You keep people divided because you keep creating another special class that's more special than the last special class. Well, you know how Hans always makes fun of the 60s and the hippies and all that. Mm -hmm. I, I survived, lived through that period of time, right? So when the 60s ended, I was 10, right? 
and I'm going into the 70s. It was my teenage years. Now, looking back today with the history I understand now about L.A. in the 60s, uh, all those hippies made it possible for me to do the things I did in the 70s. Had they not stood their ground and fought the fucking cops in the 60s the way they did, I wouldn't have been free to, I would have had the same curfews and lockdowns and checks and all that shit they had. But they beat the law, so to speak. The law came yeah. in and gave us our freedom. Well, see, to get control back of the society, we all of a sudden had a 10-year rush of freaking serial killers. I'm looking at the history of this, right? Uh-huh. From a, a perspective of, well, I grew up with all these terrifying stories while I'm hitchhiking. I'd get home and they'd lock me up for two months or whatever as a punishment for running away. Send me back to the where I started instead. And nobody ever said, hey, why didn't you run away from home? So they'd send me right back to fuck home and he'd do something insane again. This is like a two-year thing. And mm -hmm. I'd split again. And fuck, I'd be gone two, three months before that, that finally surfaced somewhere because I was underage. And just snuck through so many cracks just lucky, and then eventually I'd catch the the attention of somebody that was a do-gooder and thought I was a little young looking, you know. What would this young fellow be doing unattended up here all by himself? And I, yeah. experience taught me not to do that. <laughs> See, and every experience is a, is a lesson. Well, true. It's just but... what lesson do you get out of it? And I think those lessons change as we get older. Hmm. Because I used to think, oh, wow, this one person that I worked for was the biggest bitch I could ever work for in my life. I am never going to work for anyone that's what, that much of a bitch year? ever, ever, ever again. What year? And then what you know year? what? Two jobs later, I worked for someone that was an even bigger bitch. And what year? Like, um, oh, let's see. The first one was when my kids were little because they had braces, and she was a dentist and an orthodontist, and she was actually doing the braces on my kids. You so, didn't even know what a bitch was yet, you big bully. Oh, God, yes. I learned what a bitch oh, was. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, you've been around now. You've seen the reality of it. But yet, what my point is, is we went through this when at age is uh, subjective. When it's you, it's everything is what you know. When it's somebody else telling you, they don't know the fuck you. Yeah. They know what they know, and you know what you know. Yeah. And then we try to yeah. communicate about it, and it usually just collapses. Because we don't see things the same, you know? And then, uh, you know, like I'm always bragging about my wife, because what? Wife sent me somebody that understands, may not agree with what I say, but understands why I say what I say. Beyond the, the shock of, oh, you don't think the world's round on there, sport, what kind of drugs are you on? It's, why don't you believe the world is round? And see, nobody ever asked that. See, and I, I don't know that I really believe any kind of shape of the world other than the um, emotional shape of the world. I think that's the only one that we can gauge, and then that's that's our our perspective. Our judgments are based on yeah. the input that we get. Well, you ever notice how much shit you can cause just by asking a question, in the sense of it, doubting the story, and how people just kind of freak on you over it. They're not. They're not. Oh us. yeah. They're not objective about that. That they're fucking subjective about. It's personal and. And no, I just asked you a freaking question, Jen. Calm down. Oh yeah, I got told that I just plain don't understand science. Oh yeah, and I got You're told that yeah. I couldn't do math. Yeah. When I told someone, "What if the Earth isn't round? What if it's not a globe?" Mm. And man, and it was like, "All righty, mm. well, I know where you stand." <laughs> well, sure, because I, what. All I can really figure is it brings one of those divide conquer things and at you know one of one it of our triggers a response that was programmed a long time ago. Not on everybody, but most people do get really personal about it. I mean I still oh, yeah. I am telling you, Cirque is educated by the you know, the system. 
So uh-huh. her belief system is different than mine. There you go. Her belief system is going to be different from yours anyway, just because she's had different experiences and, and well, whatever yeah. input she's had. Yeah. Less, she's less going to incorporate years. that into. Well, not that her opinions are, are, aren't any more valued or valuable than mine or anyone else's. It's just it's strange that she'll sometimes ask a question that most people would never even bother to ask me. Like, why do you think that? <laughs> uh uh, my actions in history have always just been actions with no... I never had to answer to anybody in my life about, why did you do that? I've heard that so few fucking times, it was like shocking when she asked. What? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Being around here, we uh, it's become a catchphrase, basically. Yeah. The, uh, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> well, are... Aren't there reasons, that if you have what I would recognize as a belief system, right? Because I would say that my interpretation of what the planet is or is not is t- attached to my belief system, right? Uh-huh. Okay. Now, we agree on that part. Now, as a human, I can believe any fucking wacky thing I want, right? Yeah. And by law, I'm even protected from your harassment to believe that wacky doodle shit that I want to believe, right? Uh Uh-huh. Then what I need the government for? Because the government is there to pummel me if I should happen to encroach upon your belief system. Even if I didn't encroach upon it, if they deem that I did, then they are there to pummel me. If I encroach. But how, how old are eyes. these laws that you're quoting now? Are, are they laws or are they statutes and codes of the uh, law? And then they're, what the fuck is the law now? I'm so lost, man. Well, I don't <sighs> think anybody knows what the law is. Hmm. Well, I, I, can't. I think in the smaller places where, where we physically exist, no, not this E world we're in, but the, where we're physically at, I think we're doing pretty damn good. As you know, oh, as yeah. a as a fucking planet, right? I've got Iranian neighbors down the road, and I got uh, Asian neighbors that just came in. They got a Thai restaurant up there, so that would be Asian. And everybody that I encounter from other countries is very friendly. They're glad to be here. So, hmm, what a I mean, how the fuck did I end up here? I have no idea. But I would say that had I been expecting, you know, and demanding that this is what life gave me, and by God, I was going to have it, eh, 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 I'd probably be alone in some hotel in Portugal shooting heroin. (laughs) Were you listening? That was a good rant. Yes, I was, yeah. Shooting heroin. As soon as he said shooting heroin, my brain went, You got you back. (laughs) Well, I was... I was being sarcastic about, you know, if, if things in life, uh, they they have this illusion. It depends on what you're, t- what in the world are you attached to? Because you choose that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. some people, man, they, you know what they choose? It's just that most people yeah. don't do so consciously. Mm. And I think that's well, probably one of the biggest problems in the world right now is so many people just unconsciously yeah. make a choice because uh, it's an easy choice, huh? you know, well, like would going you... along with the herd. Oh, okay. So I wouldn't fall into that category. No, you would no, not. No. I did. All right. So to me, what I did, it, it's not really that big of a stretch, you know, but as an American where you're standing is what I did look that unusual you know <laughs> you know i don't i really can't answer that as an oh. american i can oh, answer good, it as good, me good. yeah do that but and, i thought maybe I, you had a state thing about it tattoo. well no i i've known people that have done the whole you know gallivanting all over god's green oh earth yeah and, me too sure and i helped everybody you know, so, i could you yeah know, yeah and i've known people like that so they were they were not the norm by because norm was in the bar at Cheers at the time, yeah. but 
<laughs> uh, yeah, but that is my my norm is the um, the fringe, the the weird weird stuff, and you know people that got hurt by somebody else they weren't expecting to hurt them, and they you know, and I'd run into them and find out and help them get straightened out. Hmm. Yeah. Well, well. Uh, I wasn't educated by school; I was educated by uh, life. People, people taught me to do things that I already knew how to do. They just kind of brought them. I like the artist thing. I had no idea when I was till I was probably about twelve that I had any ability to draw because I never thought I never sat down to do it. Nobody encouraged me. And then uh, something happened, and I had a book report or something, and I wanted to draw a mosquito. So I saw a book with a mosquito, and I drew it, and it got the attention. Hey, you're pretty good at drawing. I, how did you do that? Well, I don't know how I can do it, but I can do it. Still, to this day, I can still do it. Well, see, and that's 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 a lot of times, you know, when people find their, mm. you know, just kind of stumble across or whatever mm. a talent that they have. Right. Well, someone says, "How do you do that?" Yeah. Most of the time, their yeah. response is, "I don't know. I just well, do." Cirque is a uh, trained artist. From, from school, so she learned technique. Mm-hmm. She learned how to build a, a, a drawing out of techniques to make a drawing. I can look at a picture and copy the picture on, on another surface in different in different mediums: glass, wood, paint. See, and I have a brother like that as well. Mm-hmm. But it's just—I mean, he can just—and yeah. I think my oldest yeah. grandchild. Mm-hmm. can do that as well. She's She is very talented. Yeah, but see, Mary, yeah. where the big money is, is not got anything to do with talent. What it's got to do with, actually, is connections with big money. Because somebody with a lot of money can pay $20 million for your painting that's worth, you know, the price of the paint and the fucking canvas. But because they got tax money they want to hide, they hide it behind a piece of art. And there's ways to do it. Like that banana thing. That was brilliant. That was a tax write-off. See, and I just keep thinking, damn, wouldn't it be nice to not have that whole money encroaching in on that? You know, to just do it just because you thoroughly enjoy doing it? Oh, Kate's going off to the store. Bye, Kate. I didn't know. Yeah, I don't read the chat very much, but I recognize that I'm leaving. (laughs) <laughs> when a woman says I'm leaving, I usually look up from the newspaper. Go, what? Are you going to what? <laughs> joking. I'm joking. joking. I'm joking. I was kidding. But I had to change the name of the show to What to Do If the Show Crashes. There you go. And we'll start over after the show doing the notes. But, man, I lost that link about the sword guy duel, and I stole that from Cowboy, or uh, from, Ro- uh, Ro- from Rob Works, the bubbler. Hey, R- Rob, if you could repost that, because I lost from, it. from the trenches? Hmm. I don't remember, but it was hysterical. This guy wants to challenge his wife to a freaking duel with swords. To, so he yeah. can kill his lawyer, her lawyer. And I told Cirque, I said, I, man, exactly. You tried divorcing me, I'd want to kill your lawyer too. I'd want to do that. Challenge him to a fucking duel. You want to take me out? Well, I'll take you out. <laughs> then get all, you know, okay. you get all competitive. Start swinging your dicks I just, around. You know what? You yeah. have that link in... Uh, wire. Okay, all right. I'm I am so d- just uh, from doing all this stuff going wrong. I know it stuff. frazzles the brain. Yes. Ah, there it is. I see it. I can. Ah, you guys. What would I see? This in a minute. That's why I don't like being left alone. You know, by myself. I, ah, I'm not very capable anymore. You know, I don't think I would enjoy living completely all out. Solitude and all that. Nah, I want people around. I'm not. Yeah, done a fortress of solitude yet. is nice to go to every once in a while. Mine is my blanket fort. Yeah. I I go to my blanket fortress of solitude yeah. occasionally. Well, but for the most part, I kind of sort of like having other living entities around. Yeah. Well, even when I'm alone, though, I have the animals. 
themselves. And sometimes they're demanding at the same time. They'll fight for a, a moment of attention at the same moment. And days will go by and they just cohabitate and once in a while. <sighs> you know, but Oh animals. God, we had that last night. Did you? Couple, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm sorry for that. Yeah, that Bubba you, come over to get yeah. some loving from the farmer and Snuffles was like, oh, no, 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 no. That's Oy. my daddy. He, she started ripping him a new one and I had to get in between the two of them. Wow. It's like, uh uh-uh. uh. We yeah. having this crap. Yeah. Wow. Jealous. And see, and you know what? We're like that too. Humans. Humans yeah. are, we're freaking dangerous. Do you know that? I, I got to ask you something about this latest Trump extravaganza. You mind? I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it might be interesting to see what the chatters say. Okay. Because I'm, yeah. I'm an expatriate living in Denmark, right? So the, the only information I get is off the internet. I don't watch movie uh, news, you know, Danish news. I don't can't understand Danish good enough for that. So all my news is all in English, and I wonder am I being misled? So I rely on the RLM to let me know. And my newest thing is, uh, I read that that Iranian general that um, Trump took out Alami. last week. Yeah, that the reason he was where he was at was they were told that was a place to have like a peace mission, you know, peace talks. They were meeting there as a, you know, means of neutrality. And then Trump bombs the place. Uh, See, and that's the problem. Is that true or is that just more bullshit? I don't know, but I'm going to be a smart ass here and say that's part, that's the problem with the English language Hmm. where you have peace talks as in P-E-A-C-E and then you have peace talks as in P-I-E-C-E. So they weren't really wanting to have the P-E-A-C-E talks. They were talking about blowing him to pieces. So. Well, that's where English is is a problem for some people. I realize that, but okay. So on a realistic, you know, totally not ridiculous level, though, do you think that the statement is true, or is it just people trying to start more shit? See, I don't know who did the deed. Did the U.S. in fact? Claim that this was a peace mission and then sucker the guy and then drone him like they're claiming? That's some huge shit. Uh, And here's another example. Here's uh, the American public doesn't know. What? I thought everybody was an expert on Iranian policy now. (laughs) Well, everyone's supposed to be. (laughs) Just saying. All right. I really don't give a shit. There's something here from. I'm sorry, Mary. Uh, I just thought it would be fun to talk about. No, that's fine. Go ahead and talk about it. But as far as I'm concerned, you know, the Iranian policy, Mm -hmm. every time I hear Iran, I think of that song. Wow. And I ran. I ran so far away. Yeah. So I just, I, it's Persia. Oh, yeah. yeah, I I saw your comment earlier of how, how dare Iran have their, country so close to so many U.S. military bases. Yeah, I stole that off the internet. It's not mine, yeah. but yeah. I know. Yeah. Well, it's just such a great unused line. I thought I'd borrow it because it made a good point. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, sure. there's all these people that are saying, oh my God, but they're they're threatening our national security. What? No, you're what stealing. national security? Uh, look, the reality of this whole fucking thing comes down to is the Middle East oil is being stolen at some level of stealing, and the military is in there to protect it so that we can steal it. Just like the poppy fields. They should be burning that shit fucking down. What are they doing? They're protecting it. You go try stealing that shit, they'll shoot your ass. The military, yeah. the U.S. military in freaking the Middle East, protecting the freaking resources from other people stealing what they're stealing fucking ridiculous. And then the biggest wasteful user of fucking fuel today is the U.S. military. What it costs these pricks to 
fly around and go around in your big old freaking uh, carriers and shit. It's expensive. And they're moving 5,000 people in water. <laughs> that ain't cheap. That's a fucking city. Floating city. You know? And you know what they're powered by, right? Uh, are they nuclear? Oh, yeah. That's how dangerous nuclear truly is. All this nuclear scare all these years. A lot of bullshit. You know what it does? Keeps the public stupid. When they're afraid of shit, as long as you make them afraid, it really doesn't seem to matter what they're afraid of. But you know where you I stand on the fear and the love thing. If you're in fear, you're not open to new shit. You're in fear. You're protecting yourself. So if you're in fear, you're holding back. You can't learn shit. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like, uh, what was it? Oh, Bubs had posted something. Bubs, um, monkey, you old bastard. Yeah, he's he's quite the Bubs. Oh, yeah. Uh, but it was a, a meme that he would posted. What was that? Uh, you say, so you say you are not um, controlled by fear. You obviously have not been chased by a truly angry chicken. And... You know, I saw that and I started laughing. I thought, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Chickens and then I remembered violent. I have been chased by a, an angry turkey. Ah, even worse. And I tell you what, when yeah. those things peck on you, God, uh, dang, that hurts. And uh, it leaves a mark uh, for a while. I've you, been chased by angry geese before. Did you learn your lesson? Yeah, I didn't open the freaking door until they put their damn birds away. <laughs> okay. I was only kidding. <laughs> I didn't yeah, well, it, it. W- it was the ex's yeah. parents' place. They had turkeys, they had geese, yeah. and they had one turkey, Tommy Turkey, that was going senile. And son of a bitch come after the car, and he was, I mean, he put dents in a... a 1982 Olds Delta, Olds Delta 88 or something like that. It, but he he put dents in the door. He was pecking on it so hard. My girls were sitting in the car crying because they couldn't get out because Tommy Turkey was. And the uh, brother-in-law had to come and get him, which the brother-in-law was the only one that could handle him. And um, when Tommy Turkey attacked him the next day, that's when he took the hatchet out. <laughs> It was like, I can handle this, I can handle this. Whoa, wait a minute, some bitch is attacking me. Whack. So, wow, yeah, you're they're violent, mean. You're a violent country girl. Well, you know, that you happens. You sound sometimes. like you can protect yourself, damn. And you're only about five foot fucking tall. Uh, yeah, like five a, three, five like, four. Like a tornado. Yeah, you're my size. Yeah, yeah. well, still. Uh, I don't really see the point of five, after, you know, if it's less than 510, which is short now, eh, you know, yeah. you're tiny. It doesn't fucking matter. But the reality of life is so different from uh, the shit that we're fed, you know, through movies and entertainment and all this crap. The reality is so much different. Hmm. Well, maybe it's just for me. And everybody else is really caught in that trap that I'm looking at them in. I don't know. Is it just me, or could they all be wrong? Guess it depends on on who you're asking. I don't think I'm really asking. I'm just yeah. We're doing a radio talk show. I know you're putting show, a hypothetical out there. And I'm smoking and on my pint, you know. So I start. Thinking I noticed of goofy, that. I start thinking of goofy stuff when I'm left <laughs> to think for myself. I don't uh, think no. of your normal, average, boring stuff. I think all kinds of interesting things that go on in the world. You know what? See, and you think of that kind of stuff when you're smoking a pipe, and while I'm yeah. listening to yeah. you, I'm, my brain keeps going back to that. Did you lose something or did you let it go? Because there really is a big difference. Oh, yeah. It's Well, it's how you carry the memory of your existence that makes all the freaking difference. You know, it, it's like a sociopath can probably slit your throat. And this is the story that you get told. Because I'm not a sociopath. I don't think I can do that. Slit your throat and have, you know, scramble some eggs and go on with your day. 
I, I don't think I could do that to another person and not freak the fuck out when it was over. <laughs> because, no, nah, that's not my thing. Yeah. You know? But they movies have us all convinced that deep inside all of us is this defensive protector that can come out and save you from evil. And, yeah, fuck, evil's all a matter of your perspective, you know, how you live. It ain't got nothing to do with anybody else. Trust that. Well, yeah, it's like <sighs> looking at a forest fire. Is a forest fire a bad thing? Well, it, it, it kind of sucks the, for the critters the, that yeah, live there. It sucks the for the people who have property there. It sucks for the trees. And yet, but, when it's all done, the life does come back. And a lot of times it comes back better stronger, because you just yeah. put nitrogen, you yeah. put nutrients back in the soil, and the forest doesn't have as much clutter well, see, on by, the forest floor, well, so by populating, things can grow. By populating certain kinds of land over lifetimes, they've you know driven the uh, the animal life away. <laughs> they've changed yep. ecosystems completely from what they originally were to what they are now. Things that could survive yeah. there a hundred years ago would die, and the things that survive there now couldn't have survived a hundred years ago. So. When they talk about man-made climate change, man-made shit, I believe that. What I don't believe is that it's our participation in it as mankind. I think it's the laws and the shit that these big corporations do to fuck all of us. And our unwillingness to get together and tell them to go fuck theirself. And stop them. Because we could. There's plenty the fuck of us. But... It's like herding cats. You can't get a group of us together on one thing because everybody's split up. They've all got their secret causes. <laughs> well, and everybody is so focused on on the differences, which you need to you need to enjoy the differences because it's wonderful to have a different perspective. To you know, be able to consider that and either discard it or take it in and let it mingle around with your perspectives. But people are so focused on the differences. You know, they've got a common a common cause that they're working toward, but mm. I want to do it this way. I want to do it this way. Well, this part of it's more important than that part. And blah, 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 blah. And so they spend so much time bickering yeah, yeah, yeah. that nobody gets anything yeah, done. Yeah. And that is the point of this whole system huh. is to keep people so focused on the bickering yeah. That they don't actually do something. Well, you know, me, me and the wife figured out that uh, asking me to do stuff, I've got terrible memories of it being asked by adults when I was young that still to this day grind me. She says, you should see your face when I ask you to do something. And you just, you cringe. And I go, wow. You know, because I don't mind doing things. It's part of the life. You, you know. But I didn't have a good uh, start in this game that we call existence. <laughs> you know, in some areas I had a great advantage, and in some areas I was running at a deficit because the guy was moody. I don't know what to say about my dad to this moment, you know, <laughs> but his input was both good and bad. You know? yeah. Some I could have done well, without, but it's what I got, so I've learned to... Uh, Make the best of it, you know, because I know it yeah. for something. I don't know why I know the shit that I know, but the stuff that I do know always holds up. It's always true. Uh, I never have to worry about other people's opinions about what I see. It, my reality is as clear to me as yours is to you. Mm -hmm. But trying to and tell, you know, but, but. you know, you're saying that that your face changes when you're asked to do something yeah the farmer I, does too yeah. and it's so funny because yeah. when we got together i'm just so used to yeah. because even when i was married to the ex yeah. i had to do an awful lot of stuff myself because yeah. he was gone he was on 24-hour call so i learned how to fix an awful lot of stuff i learned how to just jump in and do it because blah, 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 you know whatever it's just easier to just get it tended to 
And so now when I look at the farm and say, you want to do me a favor? He jumps up and he's smiling and he's like, sure. What do you need? What do you need? And when it's just something really simple, mm. then he kind of does the slouchy thing. But then he gets right back <laughs> up again and it's like, oh, little Miss Independent wants me to help. Cause, yeah. Yeah. Have- yeah. Yeah. Because I- See, our deep rootedest, hardest problems are so nothing to other people, too. That's the good side of it. That cert can know, today, shake it off. You know, cause, yeah, and see, yeah. when I ask somebody to do something for me, <coughs> excuse me, mm-hmm. it may not seem like a big t- thing to them, mm-hmm. but wow, it's yeah. an awful lot for me to ask. Because, yeah. yeah, I'm the kind, I would never tell her, you know, oh, the dishes something like that. If I think the dishes are dirty and I'm noticing it, I go wash them. You know, whoever does it, does it. And uh, neither one of us goes, hey, why don't you get off your... No, nah, the other one... <laughs> so we've got this thing. It's just cool as fuck to uh, not to be pushy and tell the other guy what to do. Yeah. Wow. Well, I come from America, and I'm telling you, there's a lot of people out in America that think they have a right to tell you what to do because of who they are. <laughs> Sometimes they call their self-employers, oh, uh, you know, some kind of social crap that would, they feel superior to you. And wow, what a difference to um, get out of that crap, I guess. The last eight years have been really nice and peaceful. I don't miss the dog eat dog of the American lifestyle anymore. <laughs> I did okay, for a I gotta while. Respond to, right. I got to respond Uh-oh. to Frog. Yes, frog? I do, Frog. I have my own toolbox. Oh, yeah. I actually have a toolbox in my car and a toolbox in the house yeah. and a toolbox out in the garage. And she knows how to use her tools. That's right. Remember that three-wheeler you had? That was a little fun thing. My little hot cha-cha? Oh, I still have my hot cha-cha. Shit, it's I, not I, running right now, but... Yeah. My dad gave me a Volkswagen, uh, Volkswagen convertible, uh, converted trike to drive around on for a while. It was fun. I had a blast on that fucking thing. And it oh, had a two seater in the back. I had a blast with my hot cha cha too. Well, it had two seat in the back for two other people. Yeah. So I was up in the front, and I'm small as fuck, but it was built. It looked so long and shit, but it was built so I could comfortably steer it. With my little yeah. tiny arms and legs, and who it was fun. But, yeah, yeah, that those are fun, and mine mine actually has a seat that I could carry all three of my grandkids. I probably I could only carry two of them now, but they grew up on you. They got too good. I know, uh, but I, I need to get it running again. It's oh, got an electrical issue. Really? Well, yeah, jump on that. Well, you're a farmer now, so you don't have time for fun. <sighs> well, actually, we do. But, you know, we're 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 a strange couple because what yeah. we consider fun, yeah. a lot of people would go, "Damn, yeah. you're working your ass off." Oh yeah. no, look at the progress we're making. This is cool. <laughs> they say there's a nut for every bolt. <laughs> it's, well, and, it's and good. in our house, there's a nut for every squirrel. That no. too, yeah. But, oh, wow. See, we're so similar and we're so different. The world is being the world. Yeah. I, I like, you know, since I think since I've been here this amount of time over the years, I've changed my stand what, towards what I see. I'm not, I don't need the defense anymore. You know, it's easier to, to live amongst people when there, nobody gives a fuck if you're there or not. You know, it's... You know, there's no threat. There's no threat in this society. I've been. I'm like a staple now. Well, and staples are a good thing unless you step on one. Well, <laughs> then they're not exactly. <laughs> but you know, I'm not the one. The staple that's going to sharp. You know, catch somebody on the toe. I'm more like the one that's holding the corner of the the carpet down. Now I'm standing in for somebody else. I took their place. Because, ah. yeah, they were reminiscing about another American that they had a few years before me. So now I've been around for five years. So I've didn't, you know, this is that kind of a place where 
Well, you've been you're, around five you're years. You're the long-haired American. <laughs> but after about five years, people start taking you seriously. Because of the transient thing in, in life that we've gone well, through. And, and yeah. I think any small community is like that. Yeah, but it's usually about five years, I would estimate, for what people would uh, take you seriously to stay somewhere. Because yeah. I didn't make it for five years till I was in uh, North Carolina, I think. Well, wait a minute. Let's see. Let's, no, I think four years in L.A. No, I, I didn't make it till. Uh, yeah, I'd always find a reason to, to have a... a a meltdown and get the fuck out of wherever I was if I was uh, expected to stay and I didn't want to be there. Nah, something had to go. So, mm, life was weird, you know, because people are very possessive of you as a person. And we, don't, we don't give each other the freedoms when we're friendly that we think we do. You know, we, we're, we're friendly as long as there's... Uh, Repetition. <laughs> Take the repetition out, and there goes the friendly. You know, because you're only friendly with what you're, you know, used to seeing, not what you're not used to seeing. Well, <coughs> excuse me. Maybe for most people. Well, you're I, one of I, a kind. I, yeah. I keep, yeah, you I keep Vinny. getting told that I'm just weird. I just, yeah. I ain't smart enough to know that you're not supposed to just talk to everybody. Yeah, and Vinny's like that too. I know you get. I'm just not doing radio. I still think Vinny's okay and all that. He's still alive. Oh, he got sick. He's been vitamin C and trying to fast or something. But when you give up something in life, uh, there you go. There's a price to pay. Mm-hmm. You know, and he quit smoking abruptly instead of weaning off or some something. Because, you know, you, you train your body to accept nicotine forever, number and many a year. And you can't just quit a drug just called turkey without some kind of withdrawal, period. No matter how good it is for you to quit it. It is a shock to the system, yes. Yeah. There, and, you know, I'm not mocking Vinny. I appreciate, you know, you're you're trying to quit smoking and that's tough. Yeah, that, that, that. But there's smart ways to do things. And then there's hard ass redneck ways like you're doing. And you're, you know, if you're suffering for it, find a remedy to that. That's my men, you know, if I'm going to say something to Vinny, that would be it. Find a remedy and don't be ill because you're trying to help yourself. It defeats the purpose of what you're doing. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I'm, for my age, well, I'm telling you, if there's anything to this age crap, I don't know what it is except for my outside's decaying. I look older. I don't feel older. I'm, wow. Maybe I'm delusional in there. I think I'm a wackadoodle. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. thanks. You're welcome. Well, you know, there's nothing wrong with being a wackadoodle. Do, wackadoo, 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 wackadoo. Well, what about your mom? I mean, your mom is older than me. Your mom, yeah. Your mom, she's must, 88. Right, but see, I at this point where I'm at in age, where I'm seeing that, and as far as the reality is, it's all relative to how I feel physically. Now, if I'm in a shitty mood physically, aching or have a headache or some horseshit like that, I can't imagine being in a good mood. I think I would be a fucking piece of uh, work to be around under that kind of situation. What do you think? I know when I am not feeling well physically that I do have a tendency to be rather cranky. Okay, when was the last <laughs> time, all right? When was the last time you were physically laid out for a full 20 you couldn't get out of bed? Do you oh, remember? Oh wow. Okay. I don't think I've been that ill in a long I've had some days where I have not Felt up to par, and I've still gotten up and done stuff, but then I tend to gravitate back to the recliner. Okay. Yeah. But, you know, most of the time, uh, and, you know, I have also noticed that if I'm in a Debbie Downer mood, and if I don't shake myself out of it, I will start feeling physically ill. 
Ah, see? Mm-hmm. And uh, part of my my belief system has gone to the input, you know? We're because we physically we're reacting to the shit we eat and the shit we absorb into us. So I've taken the absorb into me a little more seriously than I used to. Right down to, you know, the radio that I listen to. So I found it quite the comfort to be aware that uh, the way it sounds good through stereo is synthetic, so it sounds better, but it's not on a better frequency. <laughs> it's just like a, it's like a magic trick. You're being deceived, but in, in an audible way to use a frequency that's bad for you. Went, wow. You know, it's like putting makeup on. This is still the same woman, but she's got makeup on. And the makeup is yeah. supposed to enhance the face that's already there. Well, some of us aren't so concerned about that. You know? Yeah. See, yeah, and I, right. mm. yeah. Some people are, and they're very superficial, and they want that stereo. And then some of us will give up a little bit of quality to have something that feels real. And to be told this, that it's you know at your disposal to look at it in this fashion if you want to. This is available to you because now you got some new information. And this is how I see it. See? And that's what each of us is supposed to do. But what we've ended up doing is being in groups that agree with each other. Because the world is fucking round, god damn it. Mm-hmm. And if you don't fucking say it's round... You're going to stand there until you fucking give in and say the fucking world is round, you little piece of shit. And that's where the way you get treated by your peers should you question the authority of the authority with no physical proof of any kind other than they told you so. Even their, See, dis, even their uh, explanations just being obnoxious. Are shit. Do what? Even their explanations are bullshit. Well, and just to be an obnoxious shit, a lot of times, because I really, honest to God, do not know. All I know is that we've been lied to. I do know that. We have been lied to. And that's, you can tell that just by the way the story changes all the time. Mm. And they say, oh, that's science progressing. Bullshit. Mm. Bullshit. We have been lied to. But there's lots, you know, when I get into, when and if I get into a discussion like that, it's like, the world can be round and flat all at the same time. <laughs> <coughs> well, that, what I mean more, Mary, more. But what I mean more is that is the way that we're we're separated into into groups of belief systems by a belief system. It's uh huh. And as you grow up and you you participate in this society shit, they've they've given your sense of reality a, a face for you to recognize the system. So you interpret what they tell you to interpret. Otherwise, if you see them the way I see them, for example, or maybe the way that Miss Mary sees them, or Grimner, or Circle, you're, you're still looking at it from a different perspective than I am, but we're all seeing the same exact monster. And the four of us agree that that monster is not good for us. But without that monster, we have to live on a mountain somewhere fighting a uh, bear for toilet paper. So and we, yet that, we, that monster is doing a bang-up job of showing us just exactly what we do not want, which is opening us up hmm. for seeing what we do want. Uh, they're, they're still lining up for inoculations. They're lining up to vote. They're lining up all the things that keep us enslaved, but the public doesn't know that because that's not the story the slave master tells. The and slave see, master... That's the, <laughs> that's the story that we get, but when you yeah. stop and see that that voter numbers Boy, voter keep numbers. going down, yeah. then that to me is encouraging because it's telling me there's an awful lot more people that just decided to not buy into the system anymore. Yeah, and they may yeah, only be doing yeah. it one little part of the system at a time, but everybody's got to do this stuff at their own pace. I can't, 
You know, it's like with my niece. Bless her heart. I love her to pieces. And her little man is just absolutely adorable. I will continue to send her information. She can continue to yell at me. And I understand where she's coming from. I know she's in a very uncomfortable place. Terrible. Terrible. You know, the cognitive dissonance is... is, she needs very, to, very shaky, and it's a lash out kind of thing. I she get needs that. to see the system lied to her. She's not guilty of any fucking thing except She's, believe in the except tr- trust for, in yeah. them. Yeah. yeah, except for trusting the authority of someone else that did not have her better interest right. and her son's better interest Good. at heart. Good and luck. when she gets there, she will get there. Okay. And I will continue to send her information. Oh, okay. Places to help her out. Wow. And I'll yeah. probably continue to take the abuse. Ow, but it, you're tough. it does. Well, well, because you family. know she doesn't mean what she's saying. She thinks she does, but she doesn't. That, yeah, that's what growing up is. You know, you do your shit and you find out years later when you were wrong, you didn't know you were wrong. At the time, you didn't know that. So it's yeah. it's not a mistake. And that's why I look at my past, and I just think a shit shit happened, and sometimes it worked good, and sometimes it didn't. And now I'm here. There you go. But to, see, and that was something I heard earlier today yeah. in a video. What? Everything that has ever happened, yeah, brought has me to where I'm to at. This moment, now, this yeah. very moment. Yeah. yeah. Well. Cirque and me were talking, I think yesterday, about that staying in the moment thing. We have such disagreements about how we see that particular concept. Just amazing that that we can disagree all the fuck we want about it, but I I don't give a shit. She don't give a shit what I think about it, but we don't agree about it. Weird, huh? Yeah, and yet that's okay. You don't have to agree on everything. Some people demand it, dear. That's the whole point of what we're, you know, what we're living in is this illusion of this. There's only one way, period. And well, that's the true part. But the one way that they got, they don't use it. They use everything except the one way that would work. And there is oh, definite yeah. guarantees to. There are ways to clean up the mess that we've made to this point in history with the available resources that is provided by Mother Nature. You don't need to do anything. You need to stop doing things. I'll tell you one of the other things. I'm convinced today that there's way more to this nuclear than we're told, right? There's too many yeah. bombs. There's too many bombs all over the fucking planet and all this crap we don't know about. All these weapons we're not informed about. For me to, to think that nuclear is the big threat. I think it's all the shit they don't tell us about. They're playing with it. They're experimenting it, with it. And then when something goes wrong, they blame it on a nuclear facility because you can't prove it. They showed it yeah. to her. They said the nuclear thing melted down. And I lived in New Jersey when uh, Three Mile Island melted down. I didn't feel anything. Well, look at Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Okay, I mean, those Chris, were they're big. in better shape than Detroit. Yeah, but those were big bomb explosions with mushroom yeah, clouds. Yeah, but still. I mean, out. yes, there was, there was most definitely devastation going on. Okay, does that mean... Dev- does that mean it was nuclear, or does that mean that all these years, just like the invasion in uh, Pearl Harbor, all these years it was something it wasn't? You know? Why not? How do we know what it was? Just because they tell us, to keep us afraid of a power that doesn't exist, that's man-made. You know, just like yeah. the Bible thing. <laughs> Everybody's um, got a freaking Bible written by a different, you know, group. <laughs> They're all the real. Yeah, the, They're all the real yeah. Bible. <laughs> Whoa! And I don't care who was first. That shit is a fraud. Period. If you're alive in the twentieth cent, twenty first century today, and you depend on magic and ritual to survive life. Boy, yeah, I want to pander whatever you're smoking. 
Yeah, but you know what? When yeah. I when my girls were little. Oh, how long? Let me ask Grim. Was, how long should we go over to make it a full show, or should we just quit on the hour? Because I fucked up and had to reboot and everything. Oh, well, what a mess the show was. Oh. <laughs> In any case, you were talking about magic and ritual. I'm just going to put this out there real quick. When my girls were little, yeah. the ex worked with someone that was selling encyclopedias. And I thought, oh, okay, cool, kids encyclopedias. And we finally got them, and they were, you know, like expensive en- encyclopedias. When we got them, and I opened them up, and I started reading to the girls, and it said that electricity was a genie that lives in the walls, and the way that you release the genie is to flip the switch up. And the way to put the genie back in the bottle is to put the flip the switch down. Now, I read that, and I boxed those right back up, and I told the ex to take them back. And we actually had to hire a lawyer hmm. to get out of having to make payments and all this other fun shit. Wow. But it was being explained to kids in this encyclopedia set that <coughs> genies and magic wow. were involved in in electricity and yet when you look back 500 years if you would have shown an electronic device to someone 500 years ago would they have thought that it was magic so magic is what people perceive it to be you know i i think children are magical little creatures sometimes they're little imps but they are magical so, you know, there's there's magic everywhere, and there's science everywhere, and nobody says that they can't cohabitate. Well, you want to you want to go to ten after or so, or do you want to just quit? I don't. You know, you're the one in control of the switch. So, oh, so it's up to me. Yes. Yeah. And I'll I'll do the good thing. Go ten ten after, and then we'll call it a show. Okay, because so we can just we keep have. talking about magic. Ah, uh, you know magic. what? I've listened to our show, and sometimes we are some very informative and entertaining folk. And sometimes we're not. It kind of depends on what we talk about at the time we do it. So, and then of course my mood when I hear it back. So, hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, but I figure, how can I know what we talk about if I don't... I can't listen to it while we do it the same way I can when I've got quiet and I can concentrate. See, and yeah. that's that's why a lot of people, have, whenever I get asked, so what did you talk about on your show last night? Well, Shit, I don't know. I don't have a flipping clue. Yeah, and that's something. Because it's like a cognitive stream. It just kind of just... Somebody opens a tap and there it goes. Man, and this and I have fast. no idea how many gallons of bullshit I just floated out there into the interwebs. No, because you were reading about that uh, book. And that well, book yeah. paralleled the society that we live in today, Miss Mary. Because if you look at it from the right side of the fence, we're, yeah. debt, we're debt slaves. There's no other way to define it. I mean, you can be, you can do it, but it, even the debt slave, they just go, you know what? Shut up. Don't, don't say that. But yes, but shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, okay. See, when I, when yeah. I read that, it was like, wow. Cause it's Someone not just flattering. Made up a coin. Right. Right. Someone just made up money <laughs> and people became slaves to it. Yeah, it's a stupid little coin. And that's something how we do it. But so the trick to the game, if you're going to play the game, is to enjoy the game you play. There yeah. you go. Well, some folk don't have that luxury. That is the sad reality of life. Life. Is and yet, when totally you look fair. at it, there are mm-hmm. some people out there mm-hmm. that do not have very much coin. Mm-hmm. But they are very, very happy people, oh, and yeah. they are willing to share what little they've got. Oh, I'm one of those. I fuck. I never don't give to that. I don't give, give a flying fuck about none of it. It's here. It's here. It's not here. We'll figure it out. You know. I don't live in the doom and gloom of catastrophe. You know? Plan to be scouring the wastelands for corpses to survive off of in the you know in the afterglow of fuck you. We're we got a nice life here. Yeah, there yeah. you go. It's war free. It's uh, crime free. Pretty 
freaking much. And the kids said, you know, occasionally the kids will do something stupid, but the parents will find out and set them straight. It's that kind of situation. You know, that's part of being a kid is mm. doing something mm. stupid. Yeah, and some people are just more ignorant about it than others. Or sneaky, depending on your, your personal you know, word choice. I call it fucking sneaky because, <laughs> fuck, if I say duck, I might throw something at you. I'd fucking duck. So you know what I never say in a public setting, ever? Duck? Duck, exactly. That way I know I'm not throwing anything at anyone. Because I'd warn them first. I think I'd be a man about it. And go, well, when you... When you recover from this, I'm fucked, but at least I get a laugh now. <laughs> well. I uh, live in nonviolence. I'm just being sarcastic about it. If I was to cast the first stone, I ain't going to get very far casting it because I'm too little. I'm not built for all that combat shit. I'm built for thinking and fucking. <laughs> and that's, you know, that's about it. <laughs> Not all that manly man combat, guns. Nah, more the knife type. Mm. I would have been Came like, would... Uh, what's his name in that movie? Holiday. Doc Holiday would have been my kind of character. That would have been the time I'd have been alive in. I'd have liked to have been a gambler in the freaking tombstone. Doc Holiday. Oh. Fuck yeah. Yeah, well... What a yeah. dirty, gritty time of life to exist in, too. So we're told. But the man had a trade. He was a dentist, beyond being a poker player. No. But his taste in women was horrid. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, so we're told. No, well, the history. There, see, there's the movie, and then there's the true history that took place. And mm -hmm. the true history is not too far off what they told you. Some of the names and some of the days are right. But, like, uh, how some of these guys died was just dramatic on the film, you know, for the film. Li dr dr what do you call that? Dramatic license? Where you can write yeah, it how you like. Creative, creative editing. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But, and the world is full of creative editors. Just ask them. They'll tell you. Well, yeah, but in the film, they, they made the guys look out to be one way. And a lot of the, the history was true. There was a fight at the OK Corral. The brother did get shot and die on the pool table. The other one did get shot, you know, lose his arm. And Wyatt Earp never did. But he supposedly killed a lot of fuckers. And anyway, in the end, he ran off with a girl to Alaska. <laughs> uh, yeah. This, yeah. Hey, he scored the babe and split tombstone. Huge. And while he was there, he was making money off all the misery that the, the city had to offer the underworld. Gambling, you know, clubs, drinking. Mm -hmm. So he was in no way anything more than an opportunist. Period. And what, uh, well, what, a, what a time to live. The difference between him and somebody else is he had the shiny badge. Yeah, but still, I wanted to be Doc Holliday, the, the gambler with a cough, you know, he's, he's a lunger. He's going to die young and leave a corpse. But he didn't, you know, he didn't do a lot of the things they said he did. And he did do a lot of things that they didn't say he did. <laughs> it's a great story. But historical accuracy, ah, give and take. Some of it's true, some of it ain't. But yeah. still, what a time in life. I, I would have enjoyed that. I enjoyed the one I had. I'm just thinking if if I had, like, that superpower to go back in time. Oh, it's 10 after. You want to call it a night, sweet? Yeah, let's call it a night. And, and a day. You, or an afternoon. Thank you so much for helping me out on In a Perfect World podcast here on reallibertymedia.com. Tonight, on the 14th of January, 2020. Sweet. Got anything? And thank you for letting me play. Yeah, you got anything wise for these people to remember? Oh, you know, not really. I mean, it's just I got trust one. your gut. Trust keep, your gut. You know, your more pants. than you do your <laughs> excuse me, Ooh. more than you do your eyes or what someone tells you or what you read in a book. Trust your gut. 
Because your gut will never lie to you. It may make your butt throw up, but it'll never lie to you. Yeah, well, I'll just stick with keep your pants up, your skirt down, and walk home in a group. There you go. See you next you time. And uh, are you going to join me on the dork table this week? Uh, Yeah, I will be around Beautiful. this weekend. Beautiful. Look forward to seeing you Saturday at 2 o'clock on the uh, East Coast, Saturday. Thanks, everybody, for showing up, and bye. Bye. <laughs>